Good morning students. Today we would be discussing the topic strain improvement. Now what is the importance of this topic? As we already have been discussing that the very purpose of bioprocess engineering or industrial biotechnology is to enhance the production of metabolites from microorganism. So we can enhance the production of microorganism by making changes in the growth conditions growth conditions meaning what all is included for the proper growth of the microorganism media yes we have already done media in detail apart from media the other physical conditions required for op optimal growth is the pH, the temperature, then if the organism is aerobic and in the fermentation process mostly we use aerobic organisms, so oxygen is also very important. So we can enhance the production by enhancing the growth of microorganisms. And how we can enhance the growth of microorganisms? By manipulating these physical conditions by optimizing media, the best media, what all components would be more suitable to enhance the growth of particular kind of microorganism, what is the optimal temperature, what is the oxygen rate, then the ferment, if we are scaling up, then the fermenter design is also very important. So all these factors can contribute towards the enhanced growth of biomass and finally to enhance production of metabolites. But and among these factors, this media optimization is very important. Why it is important? For enhanced production of metabolites. But the question is by all these uh, techniques you can enhance the production up to a certain level only. You can enhance the production of the metabolite be it primary metabolite or secondary metabolite but to a certain extent only. So by these techniques we can enhance the production to a limited extent. But if we want to go beyond the biological potential of the organism, every organism is given a potential to produce the metabolite by nature which is called as the biological potential. So if we want to go beyond the biological potential then what we have to do we have to go at the genome level we have to exploit the genes because if you recall the central dogma of life what is central dogma of life DNA to RNA to protein. So any metabolite which is being produced is basically governed by the gene which produces it. So if we want to enhance that metabolite at a very large scale beyond the potential then we have to exploit the genome. The genome need to be explored. So here in this particular topic, so strain improvement, we would be learning techniques how to manipulate the genetic composition of the organism in order to enhance the production beyond the genetic potential or the biological potential. So there are different techniques. But before going on to the techniques, 
of how to improve the strain, how to genetically modify the strain, we must be aware of something that the metabolites which are being produced by the microorganism be it primary or secondary metabolite they are coming from some pathway so metabolite is being synthesized by a biochemical pathway so these metabolites they are a result of biochemical pathway So like if you remember in your biochemistry you must have learned about different pathways glycolysis, pentose, phosphate pathway. So there are different pathways. Pathways are the series of events each catalyzed by the enzymes to give you the final product. <coughs> so in order to design a strain improvement program you need to know the biochemical pathway plus you also need to know the regulation of pathway. If you remember in your biochemistry, every pathway is regulated. If it is not regulated, that pathway will go on and on and your end product would be overproduced. Anything is in excess is not good for that organism. So everything is to be produced in the amount required by the body of the humans of the micro anything in excess would be toxic so there is a regulation when something the end product becomes in excess then there is a certain uh, regulatory pathway which triggers and controls the pathway so that the end product stops the synthesis so that is the regulation of the pathway so for designing the strain improvement program we need to know the biochemical pathway firstly and then the regulation of the pathway now this regulation is very important here now here we want to enhance the production of the pathway in biochemistry we were learning regulation to stop the pathway why because the product was synthesized in excess now you want to stop that product but here you want to do the reverse thing you don't want to stop the product but you want that product to be accumulating so that you can commercialize it you can sell it in the market you want the high industrial production of that product so to do that you have to uplift the pathway you have to do something adopt some techniques which removes uh, the regulation part so here in this we would be learning the methods how to remove the regulation so that a particular intermediate of any pathway is synthesized at a large scale it accumulates so for that we need to know different mechanisms of regulation you must have heard about feedback inhibition. And feedback regression. These are the two very common mechanism of pathway regulation. In feedback inhibition, suppose this is the pathway A to B to C to D to E and finally the end product P. So this is the series of reactions. Every reaction is catalyzed by different enzyme. Suppose this is first enzyme, second enzyme, third enzyme, fourth enzyme and so on. So there are different steps, each step is catalyzed by different enzyme. This is the starting uh, product, this is the end product, these are the intermediates of the pathway. Now when P is produced in excess, when P becomes in excess, excess meaning in the amount in which it is required by the organism, a little more than that amount is called the excess amount. So that excess amount will go and bind to the active side of the first enzyme. 
here in this case x1 you must be knowing the active site of an enzyme where the catalyst binds uh so here the where the substrate binds sorry so this instead of substrate the end product will bind to the active site of this enzyme and inhibit this enzyme x1 is inhibited it is no longer functional so what will happen <coughs> this cycle will stop the pathway will stop because the first enzyme is inhibited pathway stops so this is the mechanism of feedback inhibition where the end product when it is in excess is bind to the first enzyme and stops the pathway now here we can use the concept of feedback inhibition for strain improvement now feedback repression inhibition was at the enzymatic level and repression is at the genetic level meaning in uh, inhibition uh, the end product is inhibiting the enzyme enzyme is being synthesized but it is becoming non functional why because instead of substrate the end product is binding competitive inhibition is there and the it is becoming inactive so a is not being converted to b and so on and so the cycle stops repression is at the genetic level that means the end product binds to the uh, you can say the ribosome binding site or it stops the transcription or the translation of the protein so that enzyme is not being synthesized here the enzyme is there but it is becoming non functional in case of repression at the gene level there are some changes and so the protein enzyme is protein it is not being synthesized so repression is at the genetic level and inhibition is at the protein level clear that this difference should be very clear now there are different types of inhibition sometimes the biochemical pathway is not a straight chain it is a branch chain now we will see what are the kind of inhibition that exist in the body by different biochemical pathways now let us see a branch pathway these dotted line are showing the feedback control so this is the biosynthetic uh, control of uh, control of a biosynthetic pathway by concerted feedback inhibition this kind of feedback inhibition is termed as concerted feedback inhibition here you can see that the inhibition of the first enzyme which is converting a to b is due to the concerted effort of d and f when both are in excess they both are joining hands and inhibiting the first enzyme so not one end product but two end product are responsible for stopping the chain concerted effect okay concerted feedback inhibition or it is also called as multivalent feedback control now the second case
dash is reflecting your complete control. And this cross line is depicting the partial control. And this is a control of a biosynthetic pathway by cooperative control. Cooperative control by the end products D and F. So this system is quite similar to the concerted control except that weak control may be affected by each end product independently also. See, D and F are having a cumulative role in controlling the first enzyme which is converting A to B but D alone is also having a partial control over the enzyme which is converting A to B and F is also having a partial control which was not there in the first case of concerted feedback control. In concerted feedback control there was complete control of the two end products. They were not exhibiting any individual partial control but here individual partial control is also there. So it is cooperative control. Now the other one, Now uh, this is an example of cumulative feedback control. Now here each of the end product of the pathway inhibits the first enzyme by a certain percentage independently of the other end product. So here in this figure you can see both D and F are independently reducing the activity of the first enzyme by how much percent? 50% resulting in total inhibition when both products are in excess. As in the case of cooperative control, each end product must exert control immediately after the branch point. So they have a certain percentage of control over the first enzyme. Now the other one. 